President Buzek, President Zapatero, distinguished guests, mayors of Europe, ladies and gentlemen. I would like, first of all, to say a big thank to you all. Thank you. Thank you for coming here to share this moment with us. Thank you for the courage and foresight to make a difference. Thank you for showing leadership and for being at the forefront of our efforts on such an important challenge. Thank you to you, President Buzek, for hosting us and giving us such a powerful message. Thanks to you, President Zapatero, for your well-known commitment to our common European project and determined message that you left to all of us today here. Citizens all over the world are rightly concerned. They know that climate change threatens all that is most important and precious to us, our quality of life, our children's future, and also stability, also peace. That is why expectations were so high in Copenhagen. This climate change conference did not bring us the ambitious agreement the European Union was seeking. And as President Zapatero just said, the European Union was giving its example with the most ambitious proposals. Unfortunately, others were not ready to do it. But in fact, the Copenhagen Agreement did provide important guidance that we must now translate into the negotiation text and into concrete action. The fact that it was to some extent a diplomatic failure, Copenhagen, should not mislead us. The efforts on climate change are going on. It just came from China, where I was two days ago. China is making many decisions in this matter, namely in renewables energy. The United States are also working. So this is going to be kept high in the agenda. And so we have to keep the momentum on climate change and not be demotivated because of what was, to some extent, an agreement that, that was not giving us the results we expected. The fact is that in Europe, amidst the current financial and economic situation, we were able to make climate action one of the keys to our economic recovery. Most citizens sensibly expect action by their leaders, which addresses both challenges. That is what the Commission is proposing in its Europe 2020 strategy, a model for smart, green, inclusive growth. I now have the privilege of speaking to several hundred leaders that have already understood this. You, you all the signatories of the Covenant of Mayors. You have decided to contribute to global efforts to tackle climate change using all the instruments that are available to you, also as a means to promote the social and economic well-being of our citizens. And you have done it without waiting for any support or guidance. You have kept a clear focus on delivering solutions rather than endlessly recycling tired slogans. Most of all, you have done all this in a genuine spirit of solidarity with other citizen regions and loyalty to the overall commitments of the European Union and your respective countries. Some might say that efforts of a single city are well and good in symbolic terms, but irrelevant in global terms. To those critics, to those cynics, I say there are now more than 1,600 covenant cities and regions involving a population only within the European Union of over 120 million people. If your action plans are fully implemented, as I'm sure they will be, you will be contributing one-fifth of the total effort needed for the whole European Union. No other stakeholder comes close to making such a significant contribution to our global commitment. But I'm well aware that action against climate change is not the only motivation to act. 
while some consider mitigation actions as a cost local governments see an opportunity. urban renovation is probably the most promising vector for economic recovery and the creation of jobs. urban renovation is now at the top of the european agenda. smart green buildings, smart transport and logistics and in general the whole concept of smart cities are job intensive activities that contribute directly to the local economy. Crucially, they also make a positive contribution to other issues, such as social integration, quality of life, well-being, and the attractiveness of our cities. Mitigating climate change is possibly the best sustainable development strategy for many territories in Europe and in the world. Last year, I had the honor of participating in the first ceremony of the Covenant. I expressed my firm intention to support and reinforce this movement. And I like to underline the word movement, because it was a movement that we have launched together. I am proud to say that in just one year, a difficult year by any standard, we have succeeded in steering our policy programs in a direction that recognizes the key role that citizens, cities, I'm sorry, citizens and regions play. And we are already starting to see results. The Commission is also doing its part to help you in your efforts. For instance, the Commission has revised European Regional Development Fund legislation to highlight the role of cities as key players in regional policy. Now, energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings are at the core of the revised legislation. In 2009, remarkable new programs for energy retrofitting in social housing were implemented throughout Europe. This focus on technology is typical of our plans, and European Union research programs are increasingly targeted to match the long-term needs of cities. In this context, the successful experience of the Concerto and Civitas initiatives will be reinforced in the future. This trend continues with the Smart Cities Programme on ICT for energy efficiency, as well as proposals that are on the table for low energy buildings, smart grids and clean urban mobility. I am well aware of your financial needs for these efforts. Because of that, we have decided to allocate part of our resources to create instruments that leverage funding. The EIB, the European Investment Bank, set as a major funding priority investments in sustainable energy at local and regional level. Thanks to the Covenant, we have developed a successful pilot initiative called ELENA, which in only three months has mobilized 600 million euros. We look forward to mobilizing more than 2 billion euros before the end of the year. More financial initiatives in cooperation with the DIB and other financial institutions are now being prepared. We need to ensure that the Covenant positions itself successfully in the mainstream of political and legislative developments. A new energy efficiency action plan is under preparation. I have instructed my services in the Commission to pay special attention to the Covenant of Mayors and, in general, the regional and local dimension. Your views, your contributions on these developments will be most welcome. The international dimension of the Covenant is also high on our agenda. The fact that so many cities from outside the European Union have signed up to the Covenant commitments with such enthusiasm is proof I believe, of how well founded the principle of voluntary reduction of CO2 emissions is. Besides, it opens a great window for international cooperation. While national governments may be reluctant to agree on overall mitigation targets, local governments facilitate negotiations through their own commitments. 
that is why we are now assisting the extension of the covenant into neighbouring countries. We have also received proposals to create a Latin American chapter of the covenant, implement cooperation with Chinese cities, and develop an agreement with American cities. This May, in Madrid, we are going to meet our Latin American partners, and I can tell you that part of our discussions will precisely be about the agenda on climate change that we can do together with our Latin American friends. Clearly, the covenant is taking on a global dimension based upon commitment and cooperation. Citizens and regions are responding to citizens' expectations with action rather than debate. This rationale is a strong motivation for the Commission to pursue its support efforts. In my view, the global dimension of the Covenant should take account of the fact that large parts of the world are already suffering from the effects of climate change. The Covenant spirit of solidarity should also extend to those poverty-stricken territories which need to undertake urgent adaptation measures. The Commission has developed, in cooperation with the Committee of the Regions, schemes for decentralized cooperation with developing countries. I would invite you to consider taking advantage of this and enlarging the scope of the Covenant to support people living in the least developed areas to overcome the effects of climate change with hope for their future. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, you represent the essence and spirit of the European Union. From the local level, you are building a European and global initiative in the most genuine expression of Europe's democratic values. You adhere to the European Union's overall commitment and contribute to its achievement on your own initiative in the knowledge that this is good both for your citizens and also for all other citizens. This is indeed a translation of the good European principles of responsibility and solidarity. What you are doing is unprecedented, and the eyes of the world are watching with great interest. The Commission is committed to being your partner and your supporter. We have a challenging path to explore together. I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you for your attention.